All right, everyone, turn to 1 John 2. 1 John 2. And the title of my message is, No Lie is of the Truth. No Lie is of the Truth. Look down at 1 John 2, 21. It says, the Bible reads, I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Now, you might say, Curtis, that, that's a pretty obvious title. No lie is of the truth. But I think this verse goes a little bit deeper. Just remind you of a verse in John 14, 6, where Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So I believe that this verse is saying that no lie is of God, whether big or small, okay? Amen. Whether it's, you know, whatever. Anyways, Amen. it says in a... Proverbs 6, 16 through 19, it says, These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift and running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. So lying is mentioned twice in these six things that the Lord hates. So obviously, uh, us as Christians, we should not be telling lies. Amen. Now, I slip up. I might tell a fib every once in a while, but the Lord hates it. And you have to remind yourself of that whenever you do lie. Amen. But I'm going to address a specific lie that is often propagated around this time. Obviously, this is the time where Jesus Christ was born, our Savior given in a manger. Amen. And it's being stolen by a man named Santa Claus. And this guy, I like to call him the Santi Christ. Uh, a lot of people call him, uh, you know, Satan Claus or something along those lines. But this is not just an innocent little lie. Amen. Okay, this is a habitual lie yeah. that Amen. happens every single year. And often kids, even myself when I was little, they believe in this thing. And they send in prayers and they do all this weird stuff. And that's what I'm about to get into Look at 1 John 2.18. It says, little children. I don't think it's any coincidence that he's addressing little children. But it says, little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come, singular, uh, whereby we are, sorry, uh, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know it is the last time. Now, I don't, I don't think that not only is Santa of Satan, I believe he's a form of Antichrist, and that's what I'm about to get into. But this guy, we'll just read, keep reading to 21. It says in uh, verse 21, I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Now, obviously, Santa Claus is not real. So he can't lie about Jesus Christ. He can't deny Jesus Christ. But what he does is he tries to, these people who created him, all the folklore and all that, I don't have time for that. But the people who created him, this image of Santa, have deliberately tried to replace Jesus Christ on this day. Amen. It's just truth. And I'm going to get into three points of why I believe that's the case. Um, in uh, 2 Thessalonians, um, it reads... Uh, in chapter 2, verse 3 and 4, I'm not going to wait for you to turn there, but it says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So I believe, obviously, that's what's going to happen with the Antichrist. He's going to try and come and show themselves to be God, and it's going to be a big, huge ordeal. The world's going to believe on him, um, and Christians are not. But I think right now what, Sa what Satan's trying to do, I almost called him Sa Santa, but I, I think what Satan's trying to do with Santa <laughs> is he's trying to basically, like I said, replace God in this holiday. I mean, if, if that's the Antichrist end-all, be-all goal, he's going to try and get any piece of that throne that he can right now 
to deceive the world and to get the, the world, you know, soft to it. Um, but one of the ways that he does that is with his signs and wonders, his sleighs and his reindeer, and the fact that he holds the world's gifts in a bag. I mean, that's it's a little weird. I mean, it's just... <laughs> I mean, but kids believe that stuff, and that's the problem. I'm, I mean, I know we're laughing, but it's serious. Kids believe this, and uh, you know, I believed it as a kid. I used to write little letters to him, you know, trying to get gifts. But they also, you know, it's it it's replacing a holy holiday, Jesus's birth, with covetous practices Amen. and trying to get whatever you want. And I'm all for parents giving their kids presents. I'm not against that. But having a deity do it is a little weird. Yeah. It's, uh, my second point is uh, his godlike attributes. Um, like I mentioned, the letters and the prayers that kids give this guy. Um, I looked it up. And the U.S. this year had a million plus pieces of mail mailed to Santa. A million plus kids. That's ridiculous. In France, it was even more. A million seven hundred thousand were, were, were mailed to Santa. It's just ridiculous. When all that should have been towards Jesus Christ. Because remember, all, every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above. Amen. It comes from God. It doesn't come from Santa. It doesn't come from your parents. I mean, your, God gave you your parents. But God did not give you Santa. Amen. Okay? Um, he's also all-knowing. You know that, that song, that Santa song? I almost don't want to sing it. But you better watch out. You better not cry. Santa's coming to town. It's a little creepy. Um, he's omnipresent. He somehow is able to deliver all these gifts to every single child in the world. You know, that's a bit godlike. He can, uh, he's everywhere. And then the third, the third reason I believe he's an antichrist is because he teaches works religion to little kids. Amen. The naughty and nice list. That's good. You know, if you're on the naughty list, you get coal. And then if you're on the nice list, you get this misconstrued definition of a gift where you have to be good and you have to deserve it. And uh, if you want to, my last verse, that was basically my last point, but the last verse I have is in 2 Corinthians. And it's in chapter 11, verse 15 through 16. It says, therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as a minister of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. I, I say again, let no man think me a fool, if otherwise yet a fool receive me, that I may boast myself a little. So the part I'm going to focus on, obviously, is in, in, verse, in verse 15. But it says, therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers, actually, I was supposed to read 14, sorry. Read 14. It says, no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And I believe that Santa is one of his ministers. It says, therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also are transformed into minister of righteousness. So this guy, Santa, he's a jolly fellow, fat. He has the white beard and the, the red garments, which... You could even preach a sermon on that. He, he tries to look like Jesus Christ, second coming and all that. You can look into that. But um, you, can, you, can, uh, you can see that this man is trying to be a jolly figure, a replacement of Christ and his birth and all of that horrible stuff. But just remember, no lies of the truth, especially ones to your little kids. Amen. All right, that was it.